next item on our agenda is the NCAA teacher tenure information, which I believe Chris Glover. Science teacher at Burns High School and president of the Cleveland County Association of Educators. I'm here tonight along with Melinda Manning. She's a teacher at Turning Point Academy and she is representing NCAA Board of Directors in Raleigh. I come before you this evening asking for you to approve a resolution calling for the General Assembly of North Carolina to repeal the legislation that involves the 25% educator contract. Melinda would first like to read the resolution in its entirety, and then I would like to speak to the resolution and its meaning to educators. Section 9.6 includes legislation that requires school boards to offer four-year contracts and bonuses to 25% of its teachers, the 25% contract, and whereas school districts are finding it difficult to select a method of determining who qualifies for four-year contracts, and whereas school boards value their teachers and believe them to be deserving of adequate and equitable compensation, and whereas teachers have received only a 1.12% state salary increase once out of the past five years, resulting in, the great, in a greater need by school districts to increase recruitment and retention of teachers. And whereas the Appropriations Act of 2013 cut funding for classroom teachers, teacher assistants, textbooks, instructional materials, and limited English proficiency, while continuing the elimination of funding for mentor pay and professional development. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Cleveland County Board of Education request that the General Assembly allow it to retain its prorated share of the $10 million allocated for the 25% contract to be used for alternative pay or compensation for additional duties such as mentoring or leadership roles. And now, therefore, be it resolved further that the Cleveland County Board of Education urges the North Carolina General Assembly to repeal the 25% contract and develop a more effective, long-term compensation plan for teachers tied to career paths with input from the education and business community. Adopted this 24th day of February 2014, should you choose. First of all, let me say, Ms. Wampler and Dr. Bowles, I sincerely want to thank each of you for what you've done by working with teachers to make the best of this legislation. While there is no best way to deal with this issue, you have listened and responded to our concerns, and we are grateful for your work with us. To the school board, I want to thank each of you for all the things you have done for us in our classrooms with the limited resources the legislature has given me. I never thought I would have to lobby for public education in a state that is founded on the belief in public education. North Carolina's Constitution clearly states that this state will maintain a uniform system of free public schools. Our leaders even decided we also needed a public university for our citizens, and UNC became the first public university in the United States. Our 16 campus system has been a model for other state university systems. So where are we now in North Carolina? The legislature continues to slash funding for teachers, teacher assistants, classroom supplies, and textbooks. According to a story on National Public Radio, 
North Carolina is the first state to decide not to pay new teachers to earn an advanced degree in the United States. Can you imagine telling your doctor not to go back to school and gain more knowledge? And would any of us actually tell our students that more education is not really what you need? No, not in the state of North Carolina. There is an attack on public education, the likes of which I've never seen in my 24 years as an educator. Across this great state of North Carolina, NCAA and school boards are coming together, standing as one voice and telling Raleigh, we have had enough. Newspapers such as the Charlotte Observer state the Barris teachers are torn up over giving up tenure for $500. The News and Observer, only in North Carolina could a possible pay raise become a nightmare for a teacher. The Washington Post school board defies North Carolina state law abolishing teacher tenure. And now I'm quoting from the Guilford County Schools Resolution of February the 11th, 2014, which most of us have heard about on state and national news. They stated in order to consider the contract offer, in order to consider the contract offer under the 25% mandate, teachers will not have sufficient information to make an informed decision when they are forced to decide whether to forfeit their vested property right to tenure, which was earned in good faith through dedicated service to the students of GCS in exchange for the four-year contract. A fundamental principle of contract law requires parties to know and to understand the bargain they are making. End quote. Our association, the NCAA, filed suit against the state of North Carolina this past December to stop the removal of career status from teachers who have earned this property right. A property right that is not true tenure like the university system, but a guaranteed right to a hearing before this school board and or a hearing officer before being dismissed. Administrators will still be offered this option. Why not teachers? So what are other problems? with this legislation do we see? I've heard legislators and the news media say that the teachers who are chosen represent the top 25% or the best 25% of eligible teachers. Here's problem one. The word top or the word best is not in the legislation. I'll read the legislation. All superintendents shall review the performance and evaluation of all teachers who have been employed by the local board for at least three consecutive years. <coughs> Based on these reviews, the superintendent shall identify and recommend to the local board 25% of those teachers employed by the local board for at least three consecutive years to be awarded four-year contracts beginning with the 2014-2015 school year. The superintendent shall not recommend to the local board any teacher for a four-year contract unless that teacher has shown effectiveness as demonstrated by proficiency on the teacher evaluation list. So now we must take the list and not call the list that we presented to you the top 25% or the best 25%, just the selected 25. Problem two. Could we still say they are truly the best 25% of eligible teachers? Again, we need to understand the legislation. The word teachers is used generically in the legislation and it actually includes counselors, instructional resource teachers, and media specialists who are not evaluated on the teacher evaluation instrument, but on a different evaluation instrument. According to the Attorney General, the definition of teacher also includes social workers and others who are not teachers but are paid on the teacher salary schedule. How can we compare teachers to each other, let alone with other employees from other specialty areas? I have what is known as an EVOS data 
effectiveness grade. My colleague Ann Goss, who's in the audience tonight, is a two-time Star Teacher Award recipient and whose students consistently receive superior ratings at the North Carolina State Bowl of Contest. And she has no EBOS data for North Carolina final exam. The arts are just as important to students as the academic core. How do we compare teachers with test data to teachers without test data? Researchers have been asking this same question for decades. And our legislature wants us to solve the problem now. Problem three, the appropriation for this four-year contract has only been funded for one year. One might conclude that the intent of the legislature is to fund the contract for four years. Well, please let me inform you of the other intents of current and past legislatures. ABC bonuses for expected or high growth were supposed to give teachers and teacher assistants raises for each year school shows growth. ABC legislation remained. Raises were withdrawn for lack of funding. Mentor pay. For each of your first two years of being a mentor, you will receive mentor pay. Mentor requirement stays, pay removed due to lack of funding. The intent of the legislature was to have less testing. We now have more state testing than we've ever had. So when it comes to a contract, intent will simply not cut. Is it funded for four years or not? A simple question. I've asked the question to two members of the legislature. I have the emails here. I have received no response. It's a simple yes or no for a very important component of the contract. The question could not get any easier. Is it funded for four years? Yes or no? If the appropriations have not been made, then how can this contract even be offered? I can imagine signing a mortgage contract with a bank. I can pay you the first year, and I intend to pay you for the rest of the contract. Problem four, the state evaluation system of teachers. Let's say if the final educator chosen is Educator 301. Is Educator 301 really much different from Educator 302 or 399 for that matter? This is a problem around the state because of this evaluation instrument and its subjectivity. For example, evaluation and ethics, element 1D on the evaluation instrument. Teachers demonstrate high ethical standards. An administrator or team of administrators gets to make this call. You are either ethical or you're not ethical. If we say teachers demonstrate high ethical standards, is there really a developing, proficient, accomplished, distinguished area of ethics? Who can possibly make that judgment call? And yet this evaluation instrument is calling on administrators to do that. You can't be a little ethical. <laughs> so how can we have four degrees of that ethical behavior? Element two B: teachers embrace diversity in the school community and the world. You either embrace diversity or you don't. There's no development, no proficient, no accomplished, no distinguished. You either are or you aren't. That's what teachers are having to deal with with this evaluation is. So after this list is published, based partly on this teacher evaluation instrument, how can we really tell educator 302 why they weren't chosen? So here at the end of our request for your approval, I'd like you to see a trend that we as teachers see with the legislature. A few years ago, they decided that we're not going to pay teachers and teacher assistants and all Mortgages. College loans, car payments still had to be paid. The legislature decided to reverse the legislation. 
the legislature wanted to stop NCA from use deduction from payroll and single us out. I told one of our legislators, you can't single out one organization and not the others. He assured me they could. I have no law degree, but it seems that usually doesn't work well in our country when you can read legislation that's that easy. The courts stop that legislation. A voucher bill was quickly passed in the legislature this past session. The court has now placed an injunction on the legislature. Governor Rory on NPR stated, one feedback that I get from teachers is, will you respect us? Will you show us some respect, McCrory says McCrory. They just feel like they're walked over and no one likes to work for a company where they're just taken for granted. And a lot of teachers feel like they are taken for granted at this point in time. So governor and North Carolina legislature, we want our full-time teacher, we want our full-time teacher assistants back. We want our calendars back under our local control. We want textbooks, print or digital. Can you imagine telling a college professor you're not going to buy the textbook because they cost too much? And if you're going to require us to test here in the last five days, is it really too much to ask that we get the scores back within two days? We have a little thing called validatory, salutatory, and graduation. We need them. And lastly, repeal this 25% mandated contract legislation. As Dr. Martin Luther King said many years ago, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. And I must say, these things you have heard this evening, to all of us involved in the education of our future students, they matter to us. I thank you for your time. Board members, let us all stand united together tonight. I ask for your approval of this legislation.